Hello there, and welcome to Melbourne Real, coming to you live from Australia's most livable city, or the world's most livable city. The world. The world's most livable city, motherfuckers. Don't you forget it. Yeah. So uh, welcome to our podcast. Um, I'm Tony uh, Jack the Bear Mance. I am a master engineer. I am an inspirational speaker, and I am uh, joined alongside by my co-host, a very wonderful uh, singer, songwriter, bass player for Damn the Maps, and uh, knower of many, many things, Mr. Martin Green. Hello. Hey, mate. How are we doing? We're doing good. It's a, it's a beautiful sunny day in Melbourne. It's an absolutely and, um, glorious day in uh, Melbourne. A, I, just, I just got to send out a couple of shout outs real quick, if, if I may. I, I just got to send out uh, a shout out to uh, Brian Rose at London Real. Hey, Brian, I hope uh, you have been checking this out and uh, hopefully we've been improving uh, somewhat. Uh, to uh, my man Brad Burton over in England, to uh, my man Peter Sage, to Adam Lowry of Cognitive Rampage fame. So hello to those guys and thank you for uh, tuning in from time to time and your wonderful support and words of positivity. They're uh, very much um, appreciated. So today we're, um, I'm delighted uh, to have along with us um, a beautiful lady called Bo Kitty. From hello. Re- from Reality Check. And um, Bo uh, is an author. She is a, um, a very, very multi-skilled lady and she'll extrapolate on that uh, very very soon <laughs> but uh, the, the reason why we're here today is because um, I um, had no knowledge of uh, Bo's existence until one day I came across um, one of her videos on my Facebook newsfeed and quite frankly it was the best five minutes I spent that day it was a very beautiful heartfelt honest message that she put out there and um, she was very vulnerable and open and honest and spoke about herself and just everything that she said really resonated with me. And like I said, it really, it captured my imagination. And so from that point, I just got back to her and just to basically say, look, you know, I really appreciated what you said. And, and it was just refreshing to have something like that on Facebook in, in amongst the menagerie of bullshit um, that it is, especially uh, in, in the current times. So, you know, we had a little bit of communication backwards and forwards. And so I thought, you know, she's the kind of person that is, perfect guest for our podcast considering the the type of topics we want to explore and get into so so Bo welcome to Melbourne Real it's uh, thank you for coming uh, on the podcast and it's great to have you no worries thank you very much now we know what you don't do you will yeah (laughs) tell us what you don't do what you do do (laughs) so so to speak tell us a bit tell tell us a bit about yourself Bo um well I am an author uh I'm a writer and I'm a I'm basically a I've been in the music and arts industry for a very, very long time. Um, and throughout all of that time, I have found myself in this position of, of often being a, a manager and a mentor and a, you know, a conduit between companies and creatives. And um, I am a creative person, um, but I'm not the, you know, mind-blowing talent musically or artistically that I see around me, whereas my skills have often been, you know, facilitating and in the background. And I guess, um, you know, I spent 10 years as a nightclub booker. I've worked in the graffiti street art world. Um, I've done a lot of various things and, and basically for about 15 years of my life said yes to every single job that came my way. And through all of this in the last few years, I realized that, there is a distinct lack in our community of um, of mentors and of of people who keep all the creatives accountable and of um, strategy, solid strategy to help creatives work out the minefield like, yes, here's the art. How do we reach the audience and what do we do then with it? So out of all of this, I've, I've created um, my own brand, basically. Um, it's called Reality Check. Um, it started over a pint at Section 8. Uh, when I was running a, uh, I was pr- a pr- project manager for a, a big art studio. We were doing lots of corporate jobs. Um, and a lot of the artists there um, didn't know how to promote themselves. And so I sat down and by, you know, rapid fire questions and brutal honesty and integrity got to this point where we realized that, um, you know, sometimes all these creatives need is an action list and, and a vote of confidence and a kick up the butt. So that's kind of, you know, where Reality Check came from. And, and now it is, um, you know, I, I, call, I call it my coaching business, but basically um, I see uh, the people that I work with as a lot more than just clients. Um, as soon as I have a session with them, I'm invested in their business and in, in a little bit in their lives. I think that's important. I, th- I think, as I tell my clients, whether you like it or not or realize it or not, I'm now a surrogate member of your band. And I think, 
I think you need to be invested. Some people might think, well, that's not such a great idea. You shouldn't be so um, empathic and and so c- connected because you can you know take on too much of the you know the bad energy. But but I believe that. I, I think in this day and age where there's mm. so much competition, you know, my industry in your industry. Uh, I think, as I tell people, that the differentiating factor between why you would choose A over B for the most part is how much love you're getting from this person. That's what a right. strange warning. What a strange warning that beware, man. Hey, don't get too involved in the band because you'll take on a whole bunch of negative energy. What a strange thing to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know. I think it's who, more about, who are these people warning you of these things? Uh, <laughs> this is I think ridiculous. It's, it's more about not being emotionally invested right. in your clients. You know, so it's like when they have wins, I feel yay, mm. but it's not personal. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And when, you know, I had a, a chat with a client this morning who in, in one session we made a, a decision together mm-hmm. that she was then left to activate. Like we make decisions, but then I leave it to them. Mm. And then she did a 180 and decided I'm not making that. And I'm like, okay. Okay. Anyway, three weeks later, she's now come back around and she's made that decision. Mm -hmm. But she had to go through that wavy road herself, Mm. you know, and this is, uh, you know, what I was saying earlier to you is that all all I do is is through questioning and through, um, you know, being quite intuitive with people, I lead them to answers that I believe they already know. You know, I may give them strategies and marketing techniques and tricks on social media and all these things that they don't know, Mm -hmm. but the big answers about what they really should be doing with their lives, they, they kind of already know. Mm. It's just that there's a block to realizing it or there's all these can'ts, won'ts and don'ts in the way of actually doing that thing. Yeah. I see it all the time with the people who already know things. You know, a very good friend of mine has uh, got back problems and uh, I was talking to his wife one day over a, over a drink and she said, like, I just, you know, he'd done, the, you know, the doctors have said, oh, we found this and this. And, you know, she's like, I just can't, we just can't remember. We've been racking our brains. What? what when did he make that? injury like did he was it lift he doesn't lift much he doesn't do anything i just can't think of what 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 he could have done to to hurt his back like that and i go well i know exactly what it is she goes what is it i go it's 20 years of fucking inactivity it's sitting at a desk for 20 years and, and it's not playing doing anything. and not doing anything mm. and, she, and she just goes yes and i go you already knew yeah. you, you already know the answer but the scary thing about them as a couple realizing that is that then their entire life has to change. Yes. Their entire life and everything that they've built around him sitting at a desk all day mm. has to now change. Absolutely. And that takes real bravery and it's, it's really scary. And so this is why sometimes the most obvious answer, we just look over it because it's too hard, you know, and some clients sit down from me and straight away they're doing this the whole, and, and I'm like, I stop them and I'm like, hang on, all I'm hearing from you right now is knows reasons why you won't and i just want to explore that with you and work out and they, and they do they're like shocked and they're like oh yeah i keep i keep putting the road they're putting the roadblocks there yeah it's not finances or their family i mean those things are massive factors mm. and we do have to take them into account of course but really the the the, the, the thing stopping us from achieving i believe our dreams which are possible you know is, is within us it's fair and laziness and, and well, I think even more so than lazy. I don't believe they're people that are lazy. I think they're just people that have that don't really have good, you know, clearly defined goals. But I've come to a point now. Um, in my understanding, is the reason why most people probably don't achieve their dreams or create the life that they want to create is ultimately when you boil it right down. And this is just where I'm at right now. In my understanding, is that they don't feel worthy of it. They don't have yeah. enough self love and. And 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 self worth because you know what we're we're creatures of habit and we're and we've been programmed for conditional love through our whole life and so therefore that's the model of the world and we've been programmed to expect it but we haven't been taught how to deliver it yeah you know and I feel like I see this a lot you know and and I'm I was born in San Francisco so you know as much as I've lived in Australia a really long time I'm kind of an American in my soul and I find that um, Australia is is not a very there's not a general vibe of complimentariness going on in Australia there's more of a vibe of the the jokey put down here mm. um, I mean Americans can be really um, rude and arrogant and almost to the other way do you know what I mean but I just feel like there needs to be some sort of balance between giving people shit and that's why you know that's you showing love or completely exalting to the point of ego like I think that there is some middle ground there you know um and so i i'm pretty vocal with my compliments these days you know yeah. i tell people that i love them a lot yeah i don't think that's important too i've been to a few funerals this year and 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 that particularly made me th- it's funny funerals are real levelers and you go to a funeral and, and and it's funny how people will sit and say oh you know oh so it was so nice and that and you know that you know in, in the case of some of these people and at least i did in this particular instance that that's not your style you, you probably never did ever tell them that 
you know, mm. you felt it. Not, I'm not saying that you didn't feel it, but but it's important. And, and like yourself, Bo, I've become more and more that way, to hugging more people. And I mean, a lot of people I don't know, I'll generally will ask, but but I find people are pretty receptive to it. But you know, I think it's important because you know what, life is. Uh, well, here it's it's finite. We, we, no, you know, we're all committed to a death sentence. <laughs> we never know when it's going to come. And that's not me being grim and that's dour, realistic. but yeah. that's just realistic. So mm. it's that whole thing of like just live every day like you last and, and do the best you can. Yeah, and that's kind of how I live my life. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> yep. Beautiful. Yeah. So tell us more about how, how, so what sort of work you do with your clients? So if somebody was to approach you, what, what, um, who would be an ideal candidate for you if there is such a, um, a, a creature? Yeah, it's a good question because I've been doing this for about two years and it's become obvious to me that I, um, I, I'm not perfect to help everyone at every stage of their career all the time. Like actually what, what ends up happening is, you know, the people that I am most, uh, enjoy working with the most and who get the most out of working with me are our self-starters who have really pushed and really tried in an entrepreneurial way to do whatever they're doing and they've gotten to this certain level but now they're sort of stuck you know and they can't quite see beyond where they're at to do the to reach the next level and um i say creatives that i work with creatives but actually i, I work with all kinds of people i work with very uh, very corporate sales people i work with authors um i work with people that run um uh, food businesses like i don't just work with you know djs and, and musicians even though that's been a lot of my um my, my past history you know um and I, I've found that my, my general client's uh, age bracket tends to be sort of mid 30s because, you know, a lot of I've had clients in their mid 20s and they're kind of still working it out. They're still trying out all the things they're good at and they haven't quite got their brand and thing totally sorted. And so I can definitely help them. But really, it's the it's the sort of, you know. 30 to 40 age bracket their business has gotten to a certain entrepreneurial level they're they're half living off it if not fully living off it and they just need some help to um i've just lost sound in this one is that all right just in the right ear yeah, or yeah. in in the, i just lost mine in the right ear as well okay uh, but sound's still going yeah sound's still yep. going just keep yeah. it real sorry keep it real. um <laughs> yeah so so yeah it's generally those people who are who are self-starters self-motivated because the the information that i deliver is brutally honest mm -hmm. and they've got to be ready to hear it take it on own it and move forward with it because there's no point paying me and asking me for advice that you're not then going to use of course so those people who've done it really hard slog for a while they're ready for the help they're brave and they're ready you know and they're the ones that i have the most success with i have actually just recently though completely helped a a, a, a um she's in her 60s and she's a divorcee i've helped her completely transform her life over the last six months how so? Um, well, she came to me and she's been she's been towing the married line and 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 you know, I don't really want to reveal too much about about particular client situations, but basically, sure. um, through the last few sessions, we have uh, completely overhauled her art artistic life, completely put a life strategy in place. I spent two days reality checking her entire house, which is the first time I've done something like that officially. Mm. And we literally went through the entire house. I did everything technical for her, trained her on all the social media channels, and we went through her entire house and looked at every possession and and the memory attached to it, and either kept it or. Threw threw it out we organized the whole house we bought new furniture like literally within two days wow when i walked into her house there was not one clear surface and when i left every surface was clear how, long, gave, do you, how long do you think that will last that was mine it's gonna be money yeah me. that's an interesting question mm. you know and i think that that depends on how ready they are for for real change mm. and and you know i had to go gently with her so she had a, a thousand books all over the house and at the start, she's like, oh, I'm going to keep all these. And I was like, all right, well, we need a shelf to put them in then because I can't all be all over the house. By the end of it, she threw out half those books. Mm. So it was really about I, I see how ready they are and then I push them a little bit past that and mm. see how they cope. And at, at any, at mo there's often points when I'm like, just let me know if we're going too fast mm. or if this is too much for you mm. and we can pull it back, you know. And often people are like, okay, this is too much. And I'm like, all right, let's go back. A little bit to what we were talking about before so i mean i guess you know the tricky thing about this is i'm not doing coaching in in, in a way that i've seen anyone else do it i am definitely mixing a bit of of, of spiritual with 
serious you know business development acumen that I have learned from the last few years of, of what I've been doing mm. and so it is a little bit of woo-woo with a lot of do-do and I make my client I don't allow the computers in session unless we're looking at something online you know relevant um, I make people write things down because I believe in the magic of actually writing what you intend to do and I send people home with homework lists mm. do you think there's a difference between writing by hand and typing in on a laptop it's a good one because i'm a writer right so i used to write everything by hand but now i type much faster with a laptop but if i'm doing an action list or a to-do list or a manifest list or branding exercise where i need to like see things and and conceptualize something there's it's way more powerful i feel to have a, a pen and paper happening rather than a, a keyboard and it's lost in the ether with all the other crap you know what i mean yeah yeah so i really believe i mean i can't write the pieces i write by hand anymore they're too long and they don't flow but if i'm writing an action list i mean i have lists all over my house mm. you I've, know? I've it's only been the last four to six weeks that i've actually been engaging in journaling and i'm finding it to be a very a very useful and powerful tool and you yeah. know in some ways i'd wish i'd done it sooner but never too late it's all but yeah i um i i i completely agree there's something about writing things down because it just brings an awareness to you and, right. and and all this stuff goes to your reticulating activating system mm. there it is and so, and so, whenever you see things that matter to you, it, it gets flagged up, yep. and boom, that's the reason why we see. And I've had a couple of clients that cannot write a list. I wow. cannot. I am very strong woman. I'm very forceful. I'm very bossy, and I can't get these people to write a list. Mm. There's been a couple of sessions where I've had to write the list for them because they just can't even. They're so up here with everything that they can't even just. When you've when you've written the list, have they gone ahead and and actually got anything done on that list? The ones that I've written for, yeah. no, yeah, well, no, because yeah. they're not ready. No, but I still feel that it's my job to provide them with an action list based on what they're telling me about their creative pursuits and their business. Sure, what they choose to do with it, it's up to them. Is actually to them. up to them. Yeah, that's right. And it's like you mm. know, I've I've spent years helping people get through things like drug addictions and all these kinds of things, um, in, you know, in my life. And basically, you cannot force change on anyone; they have to want it themselves. Yes. You can you can provide the tools and you can provide the support and love and care, but at the end of the day, they have to be ready for that change, whatever it is, yeah. you know? And if they are like this this client I was mentioning before with the house, she was ready. She was brave. She's been ready. You know, it's been a rocky road for her, but she's embraced the change again and again and again, you know? And that's what really rewarding mm. for me to see yeah. that and mm. just help her guide along the mm. way. Ultimately you, know? you you and as I'm, you know, doing in, in what I'm doing, it's just a new a new venture for me. Well, ultimately, we're just facilitators. That's right. Really, at the end of the That's day. That's right. I'm not providing any magic answers. There isn't one magic answer or method to all of us getting through of our, our, our crap. Like, I believe that, you know, we are all faceted creatures and there's multiple ways of doing things. But, um, you know, what you mentioned before about self-worth, fear, I mean, these are the running themes of human nature. This is why, you know, terrorism is so intense right now. I mean, this is a currency of fear that is being traded on, you know, and I feel like it does affect people. Um, and, yeah, so I, I guess, you know, it's just about uh, <laughs> helping each other through the minefield. Absolutely. With love, yeah. you know. It's, yeah. in, it's interesting before you mentioned that you've um, <clears throat> extricated yourself from Facebook for a little while because of just all the negativity and the bullshit and, and, and whatnot. So... And you were saying before you're on the phone this morning from 7 a.m. You've been quite intense on the phone and, you, and you're feeling all this stuff. So you're saying it's hatred. So how, like, how do you um, insulate yourself from that? Because, you know, we're, we're, we're you know, media, um, advertising, it's, we're surrounded. I mean, yep. it's, it's just everywhere. It's a bombardment. Yeah, you know, everywhere. And, and, and from the collective consciousness perspective, so many people are feeling anger, they're feeling yep. hatred, they're feeling all this kind of shit. Yeah. So... Being energetic beings, we're all in amongst it. So, how do you insulate yourself from that? Mm, and and mm. then from that point, how do you? Uh, what do you do to try and at least um, not just insulate, but then counteract that to try and you know mm. go against that the trend, if you will. Well, I mean, every if I if I had a client ask me that, then I would tailor my answer on the kind of person that they are, right? But all I can say to you is what I personally do. And that's what I'm interested. Yeah, in. yeah. So yeah. I know that I need because I'm hyperactive and very mind driven. I need to walk a lot every day. 
Yep. So I wear a pedometer most of the time. I walk for about 5Ks in the morning, like get up and go for a walk with my dog. And that's where I do a lot of my uh, hyper brain activity, chatting, whatever's going on. Um, so getting walking, actually being physical and active is really important for me personally. And I find that it moves some of that chatter away that we're talking about. Um, I also find that really amazing conversations face to face or on the phone doesn't have to be eye contact, mm. but like a conversation between me and you about all this crazy stuff really helps me. Yeah, I find it, I, I love it too. And that's one of the reasons why we love doing this podcast yeah. because, sure. you know, Martin and I, th- this podcast was born out of the fact that, I mean, okay, we, we're in London Real invited people around the world to do it, but but mm. Martin and I, we you know we we we're, you know we're best buds and we we hang out and we talk shit all the time and yep. and and a lot of time it gets really deep and sometimes with uh, you know under the use of uh, uh, substances sometimes without but but uh, but this podcast is really it's just really an extrapolation of, of that but we've also worked out that just because, just because you can talk shit doesn't mean you do a great podcast no totally That's right. but we're getting so much better at it but exactly the yep. point you're making though the but, sounding board is the, yeah. the real humans yeah, you know you know and I have a list of favorites in my phone and the list changes you know as you're more important closer people or whatever but um my my friends know that i will ring them at 7 30 if i know they're going to be awake and that's when i'll have a chat and those people those sounding boards are they're so important to to my well-being in my life and i run everything past them I, i do i run almost everything past them i kind of don't have anything that is personal and just for me that i never talk about with anyone that's kind of not how i roll and that way of being that openness and honesty helps me deal with that shit that you're talking about yeah. and and as much as you know people say you know i've heard you say oh i'm an overshare or people think i'm an overshare people say the same about me and what's hilarious to me is i only share 10 percent of what's actually happening mm-hmm. and they think that that's me oversharing mm. you know and then i put a video like that one up that you saw about being authentic and um you know i mean it's nerve-wracking putting that stuff out there but i I see other coaches doing these polished webinars and I just don't resonate with that at yeah. all. You know, they're like, you know, sign up and tune in and you've got exclusive access and really we're just going to sell you a bunch of NLP. That is just not how I want to do coaching. Yeah. And I've really looked at all that world. I've, 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 I've examined, I've got, I've got a few coaches who are my clients. Mm-hmm. I've been to other coaches as well. Like mm-hmm. I think, you know, any sort of coach or person in, any realm of healing or personal development needs to constantly be working on themselves. I think, yeah, that, that's, and that's all there is. And, and that comedian, Kyle, Kyle, the comedian guy who's been doing Kyle Cease. Kyle Cease. Beautiful video recently about all you can do is just work on you. And, mm. and the great people of the world, the great performers, the, yeah. the people who are masters of their craft, that's all they're doing. They're not worrying about what you think of them or the other guy out there. They're, yeah. they're just, they're just, they're just doing their thing and they're, yeah. and they're having fun doing it. And they're simply just working on themselves. And the I the think flip that- side of that, though, is really high standards for myself. And, you know, earlier this week, I was I, I came victim to them. I have actually a couple of times in the last couple of weeks put myself down for not being strong, amazing, all these things that I actually am already being. But it's just that since doing this constant reality checking of other people's lives, I do it so much on myself. Mm. My standards have just gone up here. Yeah. And it's like absolutely there is absolutely no denial, no complacency anymore. It is not permitted. And so <laughs> it's a really tough way to just go about yeah. and chop wood, carry water. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like you still have to pay taxes and, and live Wash your life. Wash the dishes. And, and, yeah. That's yeah. right, yeah. you know. Um, Having said that, I think it's also important to be, again, a little – I mean, I'm, I'm all for pushing boundaries and – I'm fundamentally a lazy person. That's why I have coaches. That's why I have a mentor. That's why I have a, a training coach because I, that's just me. I, I know myself well enough to know that. You need help. While I have discipline, while I have discipline in some areas, there's certain things I need. I need I need to have that guy there knowing that, you know what, I, I feel really lazy this morning, but you know what, um, Harry's, he's kind of come on next week, by mm. the way. Harry's waiting for me. You know, your personal and, trainer. And, yeah, he's going to yell at you. And and he's going to, yeah. Well, not that, not that you'll yell at me, but for me, the, the, the pain of, not showing up or disappointing him yep. is worse than the pain of going through the actual. So that right action. there is accountability. He yep. is keeping you accountable. You've gone to him and gone, these are my goals and dreams. Mm. I need your help to stay accountable. Yep. And simply that, like, if I don't show up, he's going to, you know what I mean? Like that level of that accountability, does it get you there? It gets you there well, more it, than it if, does. Yeah. The, I've always said the hardest part of a workout is just putting your foot through the floor. Once you're in there, that Easy. hour is an hour. Yeah. 
But it's go- it's not going to go any faster. It's not going to go any slower. So while I'm there, I may as well mm-hmm. I have to leave my guts on the floor at the end of it, pretty much, you know, yep. and just just expend everything and just give. You- as I keep joking, I'm saying, look, you've got a front row seat here, Harry. I want to give you value yep. you know, mm-hmm. for, for the yep. show. You know, and so I've created a private group on Facebook where my really star clients who are really excelling and, and really pushing themselves, I invite them to that group, mm-hmm. and it's called the Reality Check Accountability Group, mm-hmm. and that's what it's for. Mm-hmm. It's to go, hey guys, this week I'm I'm working on these few things. You know, and then we'll check in or that's to share ideas, sounding boards, mm-hmm. basically because a lot of creatives like they are different people. That's why they're creative. Yes. You know, they have got personality quirks or or whatever, you know, and it's like that can manifest in all different ways. Yeah. But if we're all together talking about it, then suddenly it's not so lonely. Even if you're a bass player, I'm this and you do that and those things aren't the same, we still connect on the creative yeah. process. Mm. You and, know? Some, and sometimes people do feel alone. It's it's interesting. I put a post up on Facebook the other day just saying um, how many emails and like I'll put something up there and it might get three likes, but the amount of feedback I get from people saying, hey, thanks for that. I really need to hear that today. I really appreciated that. And there's a lot of, as I've discovered, there's a lot of lurkers. I think we can underestimate a lot. The, the, the reach out, out, out there. And mm. and the point before about accountability, we all need those sort of friends. This gentleman over here, you want to, talk, you, you, you want to talk about accountability? Um, if there's one guy that will call me on my bullshit, of which there have been, we could, we could write a fucking <laughs> book about, the, the, if yeah. Martin, Martin could write a book called The Amount of Times I Called Tony Mans Jack the Bear and His Bullshit, it would it would put war and peace to fucking. It would make war and peace like a Shantaram, fucking. Shantaram, bigger like, than Shantaram. Like, yeah, like a fucking pamphlet. The, the, the Akashic Re- it's the whole Akashic Record. There it is. You know, there it is. But, yeah. But but yeah. but, that's but true. how good is your friendship because of that? It's it's fucking it's awesome. All right. Exactly, but, and it's all right. you know, and I will I will say this to my friends, actually, hi friends who are watching this. Like my friends are a really fucking amazing bunch of people and and honestly it hasn't been easy being my friend sometimes because I hold everyone to that standard and there's been times when I've been like hey that bullshit that's going on right now I'm sorry but I ain't buying it and I'm not perpetuating it and until you sort it out then we can talk like it's tough love you know but I swear that the friends that are really the friends our friendship is so strong now after that. They'd have to be know? good friends if they take a phone call from you at 7.30 in the morning, surely. Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm pretty awesome. <laughs> so I've, I've, Maybe eight. Eight. Sure, Maybe sure, eight. Sure. These are people that are often getting ready to go to work, though. Right. But it's like they know I'm walking the dog. Yeah. And it, sometimes it's five minutes or not even. But I swear I have a lot of hour-long phone calls in the morning about amazing Shit. You're very similar to a friend of mine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Call me a lot and, at about seven thirty in the morning yeah, when they were on a it's treadmill real, or walking the dog. Yeah, or yeah. I'm on a sometimes train. it's real life stuff, other times it's really metaphysical weird stuff. Sometimes it's just a, a girly catch up, you know. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter. It's more about the fact that my brain wakes up and is going. Mm. So I have to honor that. So I drink some coffee, go for a walk and talk, 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 and get it all happening. And that means Nothing like a stimulant to get you already overactive the brain. Exactly. Absolutely. And then I sit down at the computer <laughs> and I'm ready, you know, to yeah. be to channel and, and focus and, and whatever's happening during the day. But um So how do uh have you ever had any any of these friends that you do call at these times in, in the morning? F- forgive me for dwelling on this, but this is fascinating to me. Uh, have you ever heard have any of them just gone, you know what? Can you just can you just fucking ease back a bit on this? Because like I'm trying to have a cup of coffee here. Oh, I don't call them very often. Oh right, okay, like good. maybe you know I have probably twenty friends on this this ultimate friend list. Oh, and so you can just round robin them. And so it might be once a week that I ring. Right, <laughs> yeah. it's pretty much true. Yeah. But but I have had, for example, one friend go, "Can you not call me at that time? Because yeah. that's our dog walking family time." Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, no worries. So I'll text that person later in the day and yeah. go, "Call me for a chat if you've got time." Yeah, you know? sure, sure, sure. So you, the, I, I'm pretty because I'm, in, I'm pretty intuitive. I great. You can hear in their voice the hello, whether they want to be talked to or not. Well, you know that's what right. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I've worked out who's up when and and generally whatever and um. You know, if someone told me never to call at that hour, I would never call at that hour. Sure, got but, it. But you know, yeah. uh, these are these are my this is my little close tribe. Thanks you know? for clarifying that. Yeah, that, no that worries. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah. And and it would be okay for a friend to to say to you, you know, hey, yeah. Of course. I'm on a tram. Um, You're not going to get the no. quality conversation. I'm not going to be able to swear for a start because I'm on a tram and I'm sitting next to an old lady. Yeah, no, so, I have a lot of friends that won't even answer on public transport, yeah, you good, know, and I good. get that because you don't want to talk about really amazing stuff on 
in view of all these strangers, you know. Yeah. Um, I think for me, it's a, all of this, you know, thing that we're about is I, I'm really about communication. Yeah. I'm a big communicator. Like I can tell. So that's why I, the other jobs that I do, I'm actually a project manager and I run operations at music festivals. Right. Where all I'm doing for seven days straight is communicating on radio comms. Yes. And I love it. Okay. It makes me really fucking high. Right. So <laughs> they say they say love brings people together. Yep. That's that's actually that's actually bullshit. It's um it's hate that brings people together. So if you're sitting on a if you're sitting on a a, a train or a tram or something, for example, and the person sitting across from you, you're not going to talk to them at all. You're just going to sit there or whatever. But then if some total fuckwit gets on and he's drinking and then you guys will go oh, that guy's we're yeah, now yeah. we're now best mates and our mutual hatred for that piece of shit over there brings us together it's, yes. it's not it's not love at all misery enjoys company absolutely and um and so it, it's that it's that mutual hatred so getting back to that um that hatred that we were talking about pre pre you know pp pre-podcast um mm. do you want to do you want to expand on what you were talking about earlier on yeah look i guess i was just saying that in, in a lot of the conversations i had this morning which you know were just organically happened and where some half were friends and a couple were follow-ups with clients mm. um the the, the uh, recent you know bombings in in Paris and Beirut have, have and I have really really I mean we're not seeing any of this yet in Australia really this is a beautiful sunny day we're all doing our thing it's you know I don't watch the news I don't know it's barely on the news you know what I mean but it's like it hasn't hit us yet and yet everyone I've spoken to is like really affected by this and when I've talked to people it's like you know, the hatred is what's fueling everything. And mm. then something like this happens and suddenly it's religions here and races here. And, and then even on Facebook, it's like in your friends list. And my friends list is an amazing group of aware people who for the most part are, have my, share my ideals, mm. right? They're not, you know, people who voted for, um, Tony, whatever, and you know, Rabbit. Tony Rabbit. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like most of us do share, you know, similar political and then value ethical values, but it's just polarized the crap out of everyone. So what's and, happening to these people? Are, are you seeing friends uh, and and colleagues and coworkers and and people around you developing a, a, a hatred for one particular group? Is that is that where you get? No, definitely not. Good. I'm seeing that they are just so overwhelmed with all this conflict, right? That they. And because it hasn't hit us yet, it's it's kind of like we can't. It hasn't hit us yet, really. You don't believe it. Yeah, not? it hasn't hit you yet. I think. I think. I. I you know. No, no. I'm talking about the the country, as in we have not in Melbourne that, that, experienced that level, that of, level of, 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 of crazy. Carnage. Yes. Right. Right. Once something like that happens, like you just said, hate unites people, right? Mm. But and you're right. I do agree with you to a certain extent. I also do think that love unites people as well. Oh, right? for sure, for sure. And so, for we'll example, look at we'll look at 9/11. I was we'll just going to say, look at what happened after 9/11. There was this group of people that just went, "No, we are stronger. We will not be afraid, and we were going to help each other." And the people were so selfless as well mm. through that time. And, and and Katrina, and you know, there's these major things that happened throughout the world. The um the Asian tsunamis was another one mm-hmm. where all these people just went, "You know what? We're just going to pitch in and and, and help and stay here." Mm. You know. There was um, a very interesting um, video I saw on Facebook of Wally Ali, who I, I really love. I mean, I've I've switched off from the mainstream media, but um, his response to the whole Paris thing was again just saying this is a, quoting from the uh, the ISIL media <clears throat> saying this is exactly what they want. You, we're playing into their handbook. Is that what his name is? Is it like a Channel Ten program? Eh? Yeah, yeah. Too. That's a good video. Yeah. I was going to bring that up today as well. Yeah, yeah. nice one. Cool. And 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 uh, I mean, and and that for me was like what a refreshing change to in the mainstream media to have someone actually come out and 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 a Muslim as well, you know, a self professed mm. practicing Muslim coming out and saying that and breaking it down in a very succinct and simple way for you to digest, and, and it made a lot of sense. So well, I think it should be clarified here, just to just so for anybody that yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want, I can I can no, I, please, I, I got no, this. Please, please, he, please. He was saying it. that. There's this growth uh, uh, in say just let's just look at Australians and you can and you can see it on Facebook and my girlfriend she defriended she unfriended about four people this week because they just went Muslims get out you know fucking fuck off right. you know all that sort of shit all these these very quickly created memes and stuff you know and that's ridiculous that's ridiculous and there, and he said we we go to the the ISIL media that the things that they release and we can see in a statement that says that's exactly what we're trying to do if we go to somewhere like Paris the you know the city of fucking prostitution and fucking vice. sin and vice and all that sort of stuff and we we smash up some fuckers right well there there, there are many Muslims there and so those people there will begin to develop this fear and hatred of of muslims people of muslim people right and and if we can spread that all around the world we think we can start a world war three where it's everybody against us or it's everybody against muslims us versus them, uh, it's, yeah. it's us versus them that's the way we'll do it and they've and and we know this as what's the guy's name wally alid 
we know this as Wally Alid said because they've put it in their documentation that that's what they're trying to do and so if you're aware of this then you you can you can also be aware that no we're not gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna let circumnavigate that story so simple we can we're not gonna let them fuck us over this way mentally by because we know that there's obviously you know what is there one point something billion muslims in the world and 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 obviously you know a lot of them are great yeah (laughs) great well well, simple right where where i am where where my studio is i'm i'm in the heartland absolutely absolutely and and all my muslim brothers and sisters are are beautiful and and i'm i don't have any any question about that side of things amongst my circles i guess what we're looking at is a bit more um what a bit more sort of, I guess, anthropological rather than reactionary, right? And, and what I what came up in one of the conversations today was, you know, I personally don't uh, uh, I don't have an organized religion. I, I don't adhere to anyone. I'm mm. a cherry picker and I pick from different beliefs and create my own thing. No, I but, think the Dalai Lama, my religion is love. I think really it just comes down to that. that just, sure. You know, but what, but, what I'm getting at, right, is not a, a big discourse on religion either, but more about the fact that having religion, right, I see, is putting faith in something outside yourself. So whether it's um, Muhammad or whether it's God or Buddha or whatever it is, you're putting your faith and, you know, trust or whatever into another being somewhere out there in the ether to to do things for you, right? And, and this, you know, I think has, is a real problem. You know, I think that that, that that faith needs to be redirected into into ourselves, yeah, right? Yeah, then, then you can take responsibility for your own actions, create your own reality exactly. and, and, and be self-empowered. Be far more, so far so more. in the last few years, religion's like loosened its grip on the Western world a bit, right? Like mm. we still have Christian holidays and stuff, but it's all become a bit of a melting pot. And so what's happened now is this replacement is social media, mm. I feel. And I've really noticed that, you know, social media has become this way to get validation outside yourself. So, yes, everything I post is going to be positive and amazing and you're going to like it and you're going to like it and I'm going to collect likes and everyone's going to make me feel good. But really, that validation, again, needs to be directed inward. You know, the last two days I haven't been online, I've thought of five status updates a day. Mm. And I have just gone, then I've really looked at it and gone, yeah, okay, something just happened to me in reality and I've just put it into a status update in my head. What am I gaining from posting that and from the likes like what actually in the big picture am i gaining and and honestly every time i've been like nothing i know what i'm losing i know what i'm because i do the same thing i'll be out doing something crazy or whatever take a photo or, or have a thought and go oh, that's brilliant you know whatever or, or i think it is i'm i'm losing um i'm losing a project that's bigger than than that facebook post so for example if i come up with a, a nice little collective of words um i'm, I'm a singer i'm a songwriter i'm mm. a, I'm a I'm like, lyrics and, and, and make, make videos and things. And so it, it's it's so easy to take that one little, just that single sentence and put it on Facebook and then you've set it free. But if you just thought about that for another day or two, that could have been a song. A whole song. And this is where I get to, I write status updates now mm. and I'm a fucking writer mm. and it's freaked me out. And so, you know, recently I was in Exmouth in Western Australia mm. trying to chase around whale sharks and, and you know, because I'm a mermaid and that's a whole other thing that I do is free diving and stuff. But went up there and, and wrote this, this piece on my phone. We're in the car and then I was like, maybe I should put that on Facebook. And then we got rained in and I spent two days working on this piece and made like this amazing polished piece. There we go. And was like, that's actually worthy now that actually it's not just lost in the feed Mm. you know and i mean i don't it's funny that we're doing this chat right now because i coach people on social media and and i i won't lie it's it's basically enabled a lot of the amazing shit in my life to happen i've met partners i've had jobs i've traveled the world and it's all been fueled honestly mainly by facebook and i'm very good in that space and i think it's an amazing tool that needs to be used for good what is worrying me is that I'm feeling like it's a replacement sometimes, you know, even in people's businesses, it's like their, their business is a shambles. They don't have systems and processes in place mm. and they're worried about Twitter. And that's what my video was about. It yep. was like, fuck Twitter guys. Like, you know, there is so many other things that you can be doing in your life and homes and businesses and whatever to, to make the dreams happen, to reach a bigger audience. That's not just trying to fit it all in, in however many characters, you know, Mm -hmm. and and that's kind of where the passion came from. You're a fucking fish and chip shop. Stop worrying about having a Facebook page. What, what are you going to do? You know, well, I mean, I agree with that and I don't, because if you're a fish and chip shop and you don't have the money for a website, then a Facebook page is a damn good way for you to promote for free. So it depends. What what are you gonna? What's your step? The status app that's gonna be? It could be anything to do with your area. Say you're a fish and chip shop um, in Brighton, sure, right? P- 
I don't want to see photos of your fish and chips. I don't want to hear about your $7 flake deal. No. But if you're selling the dream of going to Brighton and having a sunny day on the beach, then I can create content for 10 years to promote that. And how long And how long do you think somebody would say stay subscribed to said content? Well, if they're living in an office block in the middle of the city, dreaming of Brighton beaches and sun and sand and whatever, then they're probably salivating at every post that comes up. You just have to know who your audience is. You've got to find them, I suppose. You've got to find them and you've got to speak to them in a social way. The problem with businesses is they treat social media like a fucking advertising platform where it's one way, sell, sell, sell. Yes. And what they need to do is realize that we're all in a social space and your business now needs to become a personality. Well, I'd say even more, it's an interesting talk, talking about calling out on bullshit. Uh, up until about, oh, I went to, when did I go far north? About three months ago. Martin pulled me, pulled me up on that too because he was gently I might, just saying, yeah, you know, some of the stuff you put out, you know, some of it's quite enlightening. Sometimes I kind of, yeah, you know, question it. But he called me out on it. And, but it, it made me, it honestly made me stop and reevaluate. And it wasn't just him, by the way. It was a few other people. But he, he was the most vocal about it and, 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 came, and, to me, the, and came to me. Was it too vulnerable or what do you think it was? No, I think uh, just, too, just too much shit for the sake of putting it out there. Was it dick titties? Too, yeah, too, many, too many titties, too many dick jokes, too much... I mean, I'm an. So you got to be careful I, with that because you bring I, some people on side and you yeah, alienate some others. Um, and and I and I really didn't care at the time. I said, look, I, I, you know, I don't, I, I don't care. If people like it, I like it. But having said that, mm. for him to for him to come out and talk to me, at least it was, I thought, okay. I asked you, the question. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't say it's bullshit. I just asked the question. Well, you asked the question. Well, you you you, 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 were, you were questioning. You just questioned me on it. I guess mm. yeah. What's what's behind all this? Mm. Yeah. Mm. And then I sat and I sat down and I, and, uh, and part, I had had some acid up in uh, up in Queensland or whatever way. It was uh, and this thing came up and and it, and it made reevaluate. So now you're talking about sell, sell, sell. I think now my my way of using Facebook now is yeah, sure, marketing itself, but more about no. I'm giving, saying don't give, sell, sell, sell. Yeah, yeah just give yeah. content. Just yeah. it's just about just giving information. Or some people may find it relevant. Some people may not find it relevant. Mm. But but at least just. Giving value. Just- and with coaches, they're quite good at doing that in that space, actually. There's quite a lot of, you know, coachy type speakery people doing that quite well. Who's not doing it well is is creative business owners. And they feel like their personal life needs to be separate, right? Which, you know, to a certain extent, yes. But I also know that the more vulnerable and the more you show your life, you know, like I've had DJs who all they do is post their latest mix, their latest mix, their latest mix, and no one wants to hear it. Whereas as soon as they post a picture of you know, them and their girlfriend out for dinner at the new hotspot, people like it, you know, and it's like... They or their w- cats. Or the, or well, the, or that's the- right, because they want to know their lives. They want to know the real, val- like, what their life is really like. Yeah. That's where it's like, we do love your music, great, but we want to know who you are, yeah. you know? And so I, I actually coach people, train people how to word things and how to be, how to be um, authentic without being totally vulnerable. Do you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I think there's a difference there. Yeah. And I think authenticity is is missing a bit, you know, in uh, in some of the ways that we're communicating. We've got about five more minutes, sure, before we have to uh, sure. wrap, wrap it up. So, so tell us, how do people get onto you? What's the best way people get onto you? And um, just give us all your details, and but not your Twitter, of course. I don't have Twitter. No, <laughs> I I, pr- I, stay, I practice what I preach. Um, yeah. Well, I've got three websites. So, okay. so tell uh, us reality about, yeah. reality check is one thing I do. Um, which is www.checkyoself.com.au. Yeah. Um, so that's the coaching business. Uh, Check I, yourself before you wreck yourself. Exactly. I believe so. I yeah. believe so, yeah. yeah. I also, um, as I said, I'm an event manager and an operations person and I, I do a bunch of other stuff as well. That's bowkitty.com. Bowkitty.com. Yep. And then uh, I am a, a writer. I've been published in Vice and HuffPost and I write about just some pretty out there things like, for example, microdosing, acid, and random other stuff, community development at parties. So my blog is ghettokitty.com.au. Ghettokitty.com.au. So you can track me down there. Look, I will be on Facebook within the next couple of weeks because I have work to do in that space. Yeah. I'm just taking a, a, a break to see mm. to, to see what's going on in my own sort of processes. Um, but, yeah, I am uh, I really appreciate you guys inviting me on. and has um, been having, a great chat. Having was, a good chat. No, it has been. It's been a lot of fun. And thank you for being open to it. And uh, it's uh, it's been really good fun. Yeah. So um, where are we going to catch you online? Where they catch you? Where can I catch you online, Martin Green? Damnthemaps.com. And they can catch me at uh, jackthebear.com.au is my website. And Tony Jack the Bear Mance is my uh, Facebook. 
And uh, I do Twitter, Jack the underscore bear on the... I have one. I just on, don't post yeah. on there. <laughs> on, 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 on the it's Twitters. Just over there. It's yeah. just up there. On the Twitters. Yeah. Yep. So, all righty. Well, listen, both, again, thanks for coming on. No it's been worries. a pleasure. Thank Bye. you. So much, Thank, Jack. You. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I'll sign off. I've been doing a little sign off now. I'm going to continue with this thing. Do the that sign is, off. Um, my sign off is um, um, be nice to each other, but more importantly, be nice to yourself. Yeah. That's a good one. Peace right. to the skins. That's true. Right. Cool. Thank you very much. Catch you later. See you Bye. soon. Bye. Cheers. Bye.